Hey there, my name is Meg Lauman. I'm an arbornaut, a person who explores the treetops. And happy Earth Day, which officially is April 22nd, but I think we can celebrate Earth Day every day because trees keep our planet healthy and literally keep us all alive. I want to give a big shout out to Elmira, New York, where I grew up and students at Elmira College. But I also want to give another shout out to students around the planet who might be looking at this video on YouTube or thinking about ways that we can all help trees keep our planet healthy. So I'd like to start by sharing a picture of young people climbing trees. Raise your hand if you've ever climbed a tree in your life. I'm sure a lot of hands in the audience are going up. You don't need a fancy harness like these girls, but you might just have climbed a tree as a kid and learned to appreciate trees. And that technically is what I do for a living, climb trees as an arbor nut. Astronauts explore outer space, aquanauts explore undersea, but arbor nuts technically are a brand new breed of scientists who explore the treetops. And when I look back at my childhood in Elmira, New York, it's kind of hard to believe, but in my youth, girls were not supposed to be scientists. So I very quietly collected wildflowers and pressed them. And lo and behold, I took them to the New York State Science Fair in fifth grade with about 500 boys doing those volcano experiments where the vinegar makes all of the volcano explode. And lo and behold, I got a second prize. So for about a day, I thought, well, maybe I could be a scientist, but I wasn't too optimistic, except I kept studying science and I was very passionate about the outdoors. Amazingly, my neighbors also had passions. And on the left is my neighbor in Elmira, New York named Tommy Hilfiger, who had a passion for fashion at a young age and his sister Betsy in the center, who is one of my best friends, and she had a passion for getting people healthy and pursuing nursing. So the three of us all look back upon our wonderful childhoods with the Elmira trees and the Elmira opportunities of a small town, and lo and behold, we pursued our passion. So that's my one advice for all of you young people listening in. Try to find a career that pursues your passion. So I grew up to do trees, as you now know. I actually wrote a book about it recently. So if you're interested in more of my adventures after this talk, you can get this book called The Arbornaut. And so here's what happened. When I first went to graduate school, I realized that 95% of the tree was out of sight to foresters, to most plantation managers, and so lo and behold, I thought maybe I should try to study the whole tree. So I did a crazy thing. I made a slingshot out of a piece of metal. I sewed a harness from seatbelt webbing and I borrowed a rope from the caving club at Sydney University. So here you can see me on the left, climbing my first tree in the rainforest of Australia and later in life, climbing a huge tree down in the Amazon. So the toolkit for my uh, new scientific field called an arbornaut was a slingshot, a rope, and a harness. However, over the years, we've done a little better with those techniques. We've added helmets, we've added bigger slingshots and crossbows so that people like Anthony, my student pictured here, can actually study at the top of a redwood tree. Here's Anthony about 300 feet high where he discovered how water gets into the foliage of such a big tree. Sometimes my students studied sloths up in the top of the tree, as well as when they come down from the tree once in a while to poop on the ground, which is a story you'll have to read about on my website. And other students just really enjoy climbing trees to collect new species or study how these amazing trees make energy from the sun. It's pretty fun to climb trees. Once in a while, we climb at night because there's all kinds of activities that go on at night in the treetops different from the day. And secondly, in my toolkit, I finally added in the year 1985, a new tool because ropes could only take one person up the tree. So with a few others, I helped design the first canopy walkway in the world so that 30 people could go in the treetops at once or young children or ladies 
uh, with walkers or young moms with strollers. So the canopy walkway became a wonderful tool for lots of people to work in the canopy at once or appreciate the treetops in a new way. We now have walkways around the world. The first public walkway was built by me in Florida at a state park. And we even have a walkway in Vermont, which is wonderful to get up into the treetops and enjoy the fall foliage. We're bringing a walkway to Elmira pretty soon, which I will talk about later for those of you who might be from my local hometown. And finally, a third tool in our toolkit is the addition of a construction crane. It's a little more expensive, about a million dollars to put one of these up, but in 10 sites around the world, in countries that can afford it, we now have cranes where scientists can work from the bucket of the crane. Finally, the fourth tool in the toolkit is using inflatables. Believe it or not, we can use hot air balloons. We can use this fantastic raft where you see me right here about to run into this tree over in Cameroon, Africa, where we can sample the very tippy top of the tree, which is really cool. And inflatables are lightweight, so they enable us to study the trees without damaging the branches. I put a few numbers on this slide. You'll see that on this expedition to Africa way back in 1994, there were 49 men and one woman, which kind of illustrates the challenge of getting more girls into science. So if you're female, I hope you'll consider science as a career and maybe becoming an arbor knot like me. Um, this is the additional inflatable gadget that we sometimes use called a raft. And it's kind of like having a base camp in the treetops at night. You can barely see me here climbing up a rope. I will use this trampoline surface and these inflatable spokes to go around the different branches of the treetops to sample insects and sample leaves. So that wraps it up for the toolkit. We have ropes with a slingshot, we have canopy walkways, we have hot air balloons, and we have construction cranes. So all in all, about four wonderful tools have given us an amazing result in about 25 years of canopy research. And the result is that 50% of critters in the planet live in the tops of trees. That's pretty amazing to think about. We have so, so many creatures, millions and millions of things living in the tops of trees. But because there are only a couple hundred arbor nuts around the world, we have probably discovered less than 10% of those creatures to date. And the other thing we discovered from studying the whole tree, including the top, is that trees literally are such an important investment for the health of humans and the health of our planet. They're kind of like a multi-million dollar machine that just grow and operate while you sleep, which is pretty gosh darn cool when you think about it. Trees produce fresh water because they cleanse pollutions through the foliage. Trees produce oxygen, of course, and make energy from the sun. Trees give us timber and food and clothing. My favorite food, which is chocolate, comes from a tree. I don't know if you knew that before, but that's pretty cool. And tree roots, of course, keep the soil from going into the water and going out to the ocean. Trees, of course, as we now know, house half of the species on earth and tree trunks, which we've learned from canopy research are an important way to store carbon. And when humans pollute carbon dioxide, trees actually make up for that by absorbing it. Trees are really important to climate control. We're finding out that the trees in the Amazon help keep us healthy in places like Florida where I live and Elmira, New York where I was born and all kinds of amazing overviews of climate depend upon these big patches of forests to control our rainfall and our wind patterns and our amazing temperatures. Finally, for about 2 billion people, trees provide an important spiritual and religious heritage, which is super important. I think, too, it's really nice to think about the fact that trees are so important to get kids into nature. And we're finding out that when kids can play outdoors, they get better grades in school, they're better mental health. And so all over the world, I'm hoping that with 
arbor knot research and building canopy walkways, we can get more kids outdoors. Even kids who might not think they should climb trees, like my student here named Rebecca, who is mobility limited, as we call it. She has her life uh, limited to a wheelchair, but we figured out some pulleys and figured out a way that Rebecca could use her arms and become an arbor knot. And guess what? She discovered new species growing in the oak trees of Kansas, which is very, very cool. So I'd like to take you on one little expedition to a country where the trees are in really grave danger. In Ethiopia, over 95% of the forests are gone. And this is the case for a lot of countries that can't afford to save their trees. And we need to save trees in every country, not just our own backyard. Here are the last remaining trees in Ethiopia. You can barely see here this circle of trees, which is called a church forest. Here's the church in the middle and around the successful church in Ethiopia, the priests always keep trees because it's a symbol of health. It's a symbol of spirituality, but a lot of these trees are getting ruined by cattle and sheep coming in and grazing by people harvesting the edge trees, which get a little dry. And so the people take them for firewood. And suddenly Ethiopia found herself in a situation where almost all the forests were cleared for subsistence agriculture. And this is how Ethiopia looks on Google Earth. Pretty scary, eh? But the good news is that the priests, when they saw these pictures that I showed them said, holy cow, we really need to save our church forests because that's the last place for birds, for animals, and for insects that pollinate the gardens. So now we have a collective mission, global and local, to try to save the trees in Ethiopia. And to do that, it's a partnership of science and religion so that we can work together to keep these amazing genetic libraries, these little tiny forests left, that will seed the whole future of Ethiopia. And so to do that, I give workshops to the priests. None of these priests have a computer or a cell phone or an ability to see a Google Earth image. So they need to be educated about how rare these tree patches are on the landscape of Ethiopia. And secondly, the priests came up with a solution. They said, what if we took the stones out of the farmer's field, which they love, and what if we volunteered to build stone walls so that all of the rest of the trees would be safe with a boundary? So today we're funding a project to move the stones to build gates and the people are building the walls. And guess what? The church forests are being saved. Here's a wall all around a great big church forest. You can see how healthy it is inside and how absolutely dry and um, difficult it is to grow trees on the outside. So all countries like this need our help and the children need our help too. In a country like Ethiopia, these kids have never owned a book or even a pencil for that matter. So we've been working hard to try to help them get the tools to be the future Arbor Nuts. So in Final uh, summary of my message to all of you, I wanna just highlight the challenge we have on planet Earth. There are a lot of countries that are losing their trees. In my lifetime alone, 50% of the world's primary forests have been cut down. So we need to really work urgently together. And because I'm a tree scientist, because I've had over 40 years of tree climbing and discovering new species, and studying big trees and I've worked in over 40 countries, I think I should probably be one of the people that tries to lead the charge to help save the world's trees. So to do that, I've started a new program. It's called Mission Green. I guess you can guess what the objective is. It's to keep the planet green. And it has five tents in the mission and the goals. We want to raise $10 million to build 10 canopy walkways and save 10 highly endangered forests from being cut down. And through that, we'll probably easily be able to hire 10 times 10 equals 100 local people, especially women and families, to operate the ecotourism that is based upon the canopy walkway 
And lastly, we'll be able to fund about 10 by 10 by 10, a thousand students through National Geographic, through Williams College, my alma mater, through Elmira College, through Harvard, through Oxford, all kinds of universities welcome the opportunity for their students to make new discoveries. So the Mission Green has a 10 by 10 by 10 by 10 mission that I sure hope to achieve fairly shortly. And the 10 hotspots are the most important forests of which four are already finished with a canopy walkway include the redwoods in California that has a walkway, the subtropical forests of Florida that has a walkway, the Amazon that has a walkway, and the Malaysian forest that has a walkway. But we're working hard on the Great Smoky Mountains, the Mata Atlantica, an endangered forest in the east coast of Brazil, the forests of Mozambique, the forests of India, the forests of Madagascar, and finally the forests in Bhutan. So keep an eye, we're fundraising now to save lemurs because Madagascar, similar to Ethiopia, has less than 5% of her forests left. And we really hope to build a canopy walkway there in the next year. And lo and behold, by 2030, I hope that thanks to our fundraising and our global partnerships, we will have these 10 by 10 by 10, by a hundred by a thousand outcomes to help save the force of the world so that all of you young people might have a healthy planet in which to live. And finally, even my hometown of Elmira, New York is getting a canopy walkway, which means that it's a really exciting opportunity for lots of communities, even if your forest is not endangered. It's a great way to get kids out to nature. So I just like to close with my websites in case you wanna do more homework, have a opportunity to go on treefoundation.org and sign up for our newsletter or read about my adventures on canopymag.com. Thanks so much for joining me in the treetops today. Bye.